Hello, I'm Dave Goldberg, faculty member at the University of Illinois. Today I'd like to talk about some of the differences between science and engineering. Now let's start from engineering. One of my favorite definitions and a favorite definition of many engineers is the one given by the uh, noted fluid dynamicist Theodore von Karman that the scientist merely explores that which exists while the engineer creates what has never existed before. And so, although this isn't really a very good definition per se of what engineering it is, it is a, an attempt to uh, solve a demarcation problem, that is to distinguish between what engineering is and what science is. And so, let's explore the relationship between science and engineering a little bit. Now, one of the common things that you'll hear said is that uh, engineering is merely applied science. And uh, you'll, hear, you'll certainly hear this from uh, scientists. You'll hear uh, from mathematicians maybe that uh, engineering is merely applied mathematics. Um, but there are a number of engineers who will uh, talk uh, against this position, critique this position. One of them is uh, Walter Vincenti uh, at Stanford who wrote the uh, uh, seminal book, What Engineers Know and How They Know It. But instead of examining that point of view, uh, as valuable as it is, we're going to go back in time a little bit to the founding of modern science and listen to what uh, the father of modern science, Francis Bacon, has said about the relationship between science and engineering. And the first thing is that in uh, the Great Instauration, Bacon says that there's a problem with the state of knowledge. And let's quote Bacon. Uh, he says that the state of knowledge is not prosperous and that a way must be opened for the human understanding entirely different from any hitherto known in order that the mind may exercise over the nature of things the authority which properly belongs to it. And so actually it's very interesting that Bacon's goals for the new science were to control the environment and to control nature in a way that it could benefit mankind. And that certainly has kind of an engineering flavor to it, uh, if anything has. And he identifies the problem of the knowledge of his time, essentially that they were stuck on Aristotelian physics. And here's Bacon again. All the tradition and succession of schools is still a succession of masters and scholars, not of inventors, and those who bring to further perfection the things invented. So the complaint here is that, that the, the Greeks gave Western civilization great gifts, and those great gifts came down through history largely unchanged, at least in, in the sciences, and it was time to uh, learn a lesson. And the lesson, as is being hinted here, is from inventors and things invented. That's interesting. In a, in a, in and of itself, but Bacon goes on to name names. In the mechanical arts, we do not find it so. They, on the contrary, as having in them some breath of life, are continually growing and becoming more perfect. As originally invented, they are commonly rude, clumsy, and shapeless. Afterwards, they acquire new powers and more commodious arrangements and constructions. Philosophy and the intellectual sciences, on the contrary, stand like statues. So what's Bacon saying? He's saying we need to take a lesson in the creation of modern science. The father of science says essentially that we need to take a lesson from engineers. So we've got it backwards. For those who say that engineering is merely applied science, it would be actually better or at least more accurate to say, um, and certainly as haughty, to say that science is merely engineering applied to the invention of concepts. So the next time you get that put down of engineering as merely applied science uh, from a physicist or a mathematician, you can respond that actually you've got it backwards and that it's the other way around. 